Hi guys and uh, welcome to another video. This is all on P7 which is the topic of radioactivity. In this topic we look at the three main types of radiation which is alpha, beta and gamma and we look at how we use radioactivities for really important uses and also some of the dangers that are associated with radioactive power. Also now I'm making resources for my channel so please check the video description in order to see some resources that I'm making for my channel and remember if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel. To start off uh, the topic of radioactivity, we need to start looking at atoms because radioactivity is a property of uh, heavy atoms uh, where they break down uncontrollably. Um, and if we go back to our modern theory of the atom, we, we must remember that our, we have at the centre of our atoms a nucleus uh, and we have our neutrons, uh, our protons and uh, electrons. Uh, remember that the protons are positively charged, the neutrons are neutral charge, and the electrons have a charge of uh, 1 minus. Um, now, let's just go back to how we discovered how our atom looks uh, like this. And we go back to the experiment uh, known as the gold foil experiment. Um, and that was an experiment carried out by Ernest uh, Rutherford. Um, it was actually from Manchester University, Ernest Rutherford. And um, he, he discovered that, that inside the atom there must be protons and electrons. He didn't discover the neutrons at this time, uh, but it's still an important experiment for physicists to remember. What he did in this experiment was he fired alpha particles, a very thin sheet of gold foil. And what he noticed was 99% uh, uh, of the uh, alpha particles went straight through. Um, and you can see that from uh, the diagram here. Uh, you can see that most of them went completely straight through. Um, uh, but a few of them, about 0.9% of them, they actually deflected through an angle. Um, and uh, the reason why they deflected was uh, because of the fact uh, there must be a positive uh, nucleus, and that's due to the, uh, the protons in that nucleus, but there must be a positive nucleus. The, 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 the fact that most of them went straight through is because of the fact the nucleus is very tiny, uh, but... Um, some of them deflected because of this positive nucleus and then 0.1% of them came back and because they came back it meant that the, all the mass of the atom must have been in that nucleus. Um, you, mu you, you will know this because of the fact uh, you'll have done this in chemistry atomic structure. Now I said that uh, radioactivity uh, was the spontaneous breaking down of uh, atoms and there are three types that you need to know about. You need to know about alpha, beta and gamma. And uh, all of the different emissions are different in the way that they break down the atom and the energy that's released from them emissions. The first one we're going to look about at is alpha emission. When alpha emission occurs, uh, you release a helium uh, nuclei from uh, the atom, the, the parent nuclei. Uh, and uh, this is an example above. If you look at uh, radon here, radon 226, it's being broken down. The mass number has gone down by four and the proton number has gone down by two and I've emitted a helium nuclei. And I'll go through another example now. Here I've got a uranium 235 uh, atom and it's going to break down uh, by alpha emission. This is actually what you find in nuclear reactors is uranium-235 and it breaks down into thorium and you can find this out from the periodic table. If you go down uh, proton number by two and the proton number determines which element you make. If you go back down by two that makes thorium 
and uh, if you, you need to for the top number take away four just like the top example uh, so two three five minus four is two three one and I make an alpha particle which is a helium nuclei um, and you can if you don't want to put uh, H uh, E you can also do the alpha symbol that's fine uh, and you'll still get the mark if you're told to put a nu nuclear equation for an alpha emission but there's the same rule each time and that rule is that the top number always goes down by four and the bottom number always goes down by two and look it changes element okay it's going to change element because you're changing the proton number the next uh, emission we're going to look at is beta emission let's look at the trend that's going up on here uh, this time we're not going uh, down in proton number look we're actually going up in proton number so uh, in uh, beta emission the proton uh, number goes up and basically what happens in beta emission is a pro uh, a neutron is converted into a proton and that causes a beta particle to be released so if we're going to look at another example like uh, we did earlier we'll use carbon 14 as the example for this um, what happens is that uh, neutron is converted into a proton, so the proton number goes up by one. And if, if you see what happens with carbon, look next to it on the periodic table. When the proton goes, number goes up by one, you make nitrogen, and the atomic mass actually stays the same, and it also releases this beta particle. And what a beta particle basically is, is just a high-energy electron. Um, and you can see uh, with this uh, particle that's been emitted, uh, it has a minus one uh, proton number because of the fact it just balances out the equation. Let's just put the rule again uh, down here. So if you've got uh, X and it's equaling uh, to A and B, let's just keep it like that. And you make a new element, which could be C and the atomic number is going to go down uh, it's going to stay the same and a is going to go up by one this time and it's going to pl always plus a beta particle let's look at gamma emission now uh, if you look at gamma emission carefully it doesn't look like much is going on and that's because that's basically right gamma emission is uh, like releasing a wave okay um if you've done uh, electromagnetic waves you'll notice that one of the EM waves is is a gamma wave um, and that's why the proton number and the atomic mass are not changing of the element so writing gamma equations are really easy gamma um, radiation is usually a byproduct of alpha emission and beta emission let's just look at uh, another example uh, let's look at the isotope uh, neon 22 uh, notice how I'm talking about isotopes here and we'll just go over what an isotope is just quickly um, an isotope is a different form of an atom that has the same number of protons and electrons but a different number of neutrons now if you look at this equation nothing really changes uh, but a gamma uh, particle is released um, Notice as well about the isotopes in the fact that they're, they're all quite heavy isotopes. Um, heavier isotopes are more likely to go under uh, radioactive emission. We're going to look a bit more at the properties of alpha, beta and gamma radiation now. Um, and look at the penetrating power and the ionizing ability of each one of the types of radiation. So alpha radiation um, is the least penetrating uh, and it's actually stopped by a uh, paper so it's the least penetrating uh, and the reason why it's the least penetrating is because it's the most ionizing. Uh, basically that means that it's converting atoms in the air into ions okay that makes it incredibly dangerous as well if that was to get into your body um, it would turn all of the atoms in, in your body and destroy it into ions and destroy your cells it would be very very bad um, but luckily it's, it's not very penetrating it couldn't get through your skin um, however if it did get into your body it would be incredibly harmful for example if it was ingested uh, it would be incredibly dangerous and uh, alpha radiation obviously has a charge of plus two as it's a helium nuclei 
The next one we're going to look at is beta uh, radiation. That one has a charge of minus one. Remember I said it's a very high energy electron. Um, and it is uh, the medium amount of penetration. It gets stopped by paper. Uh, it will travel through the paper but gets stopped by aluminium. A thin sheet of aluminium should uh, stop it. And it's the medium uh, for uh, ionizing as well. It, it's quite dangerous uh, and it will travel through uh, quite a lot of things. So beta radiation is uh, one to look out for. And then the last one is gamma radiation. Uh, and I said it doesn't have a charge because it's a high energy wave. Um, it is the most penetrating. It will travel through the paper and aluminium quite easily, uh, but it will get stopped by thick lead. So that's why uh, gamma sources are usually kept in real thick lead containers and it's the least ionizing. So it causes the least amount of harm. However, exposure to gamma radiation still isn't advised. It will still ionize some of your cells. Um, it's actually used in cancer treatments, gamma radiation, uh, because of its ionizing abilities. Although radio uh, radioactivity is a spontaneous process, the time required for half the nuclei to decompose is always the same. And this is called the half-life. Here I've drawn a typical half-life uh, graph um, with time on the x-axis and number of radioactive nuclei in thousands on uh, the y-axis. So this is the number of radioactive nuclei. Um, and if we look at how long it takes for that to half, so we've got a thousand radio, um, yeah, a thousand radioactive uh, nuclei here. And if we go down here to 500 radioactive nuclei, if we go down to there, we notice that it takes two minutes for it to half. So the half-life of uh, this uh, isotope would be two minutes. And the half-life's constant, look, for it to half again and go from 0 uh,0.5 thousand to 0 0.25 thousand, for it to do that, it takes another two minutes, okay? So it's constant, the half-life. And we can use half-lives to predict how many uh, nuclei we're going to have after a certain amount of time. For example, uh, if we know that the half-life of this nuclei is two minutes, and say we started off with uh, 20,000 of these radioactive nuclei, and you said that how much nuclei will be left after uh, 10 minutes. Well, you can see that uh, for 10 minutes to occur, you must have had five half-lives. After one half-life, you'll have a half. After another half-life, you'll have a quarter of what you started with. After another, you'll have an eighth. After another, you'll have a sixteenth. And after one more, you'll have only one thirty second of what you started with. So to work out the number of nuclei left, all you'd need to do is times that 20,000 by 1 over 32. And that will give you the number of radioactive nuclei you have left, which is 625 radioactive nuclei. If you are doing combined science, uh, you have finished for this topic. Uh, if you are doing triple science and GCSE physics, uh, you just have a small little bit of the video to go. Well done to you combined science uh, people for finishing and getting towards the end of the video. We use radioactivity um, around the world in order to meet our energy needs. And we use reactors uh, called nuclear fission reactors. And they work basically uh, through alpha emission um, of uranium-235. Uh, we looked a bit at what the, what the equation for that reaction looked like. Um, and when uranium-235 uh, goes under this alpha emission, it starts off a chain reaction. Um, and this chain reaction keeps releasing uh, them helium nuclei, which bump into other uh, atoms that are inside that reactor. And it starts off a chain reaction, adds there's beta emission thrown in there and some gamma emission, and it keeps on going on. 
to control this chain reaction, what is used is they use metal rods um, and that basically sl slows down these chain reactions and stops off, um, it, it separates all of the material that's inside that nuclear reactor. Also they use uh, water uh, to cool it down. The reason why they take all these precautions is because it's extremely dangerous to run a nuclear reactor. Um, there was a massive disaster in Chernobyl uh, uh, and in Chernobyl what happened was uh, the, the nuclear power station exploded releasing uh, tons and tons of nuclear waste out into the surrounding and that's a massive problem with nuclear reactors is the, the fact you make nuclear waste uh, and this nuclear waste needs disposing of. Um, so, so we need to look at ways that we can control the amount of waste that we produce uh, through nuclear reactors and what to do with the waste. However, nuclear fission does have its benefits and that's why we do use it. We, we use nuclear fission because of the fact it doesn't release uh, as harmful green, greenhouse gases that coal and oil may release and also the fact um, there is a, there's still a lot of uranium resource uh, for us, so it can last us for, for lots and lots of years. And you don't need to use a lot of uranium to put in the reactor to get lots of energy out. The last bit of uh, this video is incredibly interesting. It looks at nuclear fusion. And nuclear fusion is really interesting. The reason why it's so interesting is because through nuclear fusion, if we were able to harness the energy of nuclear fusion, We'd have enough energy to power the whole world um, and uh, without, without problems, really. Um, and it's what goes on in the sun. Uh, nuclear fusion happens in the sun. And what goes on in the sun is basically hydrogen, heavy hydrogen combined in order to make helium nuclei, uh, which, which releases lots of energy. Um, what happens is you've got these deuterium uh, hydrogen isotopes and they combine in order to make a helium uh, and this release, releases quite a lot of energy um, however to uh, in order to get this heavy hydrogen this deuterium uh, you need to have plasma at really really high temperatures and that's the problem with recreating these conditions on earth is it's really hard to create the temperatures that, that occur in the sun uh, in order to fuse these hydrogen atoms together and make helium now, uh, it has happened on Earth. We have uh, created nuclear fusion. Uh, think about um, hydrogen bombs, for example. Uh, hydrogen bombs work by fusing these uh, hydrogen nuclei together. However, uh, it does create lots and lots of energy and it, it's, ve it's very hard uh, to, to control it. Um, so it's not being produced on an industrial scale where we have used uh, hydrogen as an energy source uh, in a nuclear fusion reactor yet. So kind of in, fu in summary, fusion would be a lot more desirable than fission. However, it's not achievable currently on Earth as we do not have the technology uh, to be able to create the high temperatures needed uh, to create the heavy hydrogen.